The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. Brought to you by Nadex. Now, Tom O'Brien, Daryl Martin, and Steve Rhodes. Welcome, folks, to Daryl Martin, uh, Tom O'Brien, and Steve Rhodes. We appreciate you growling and prowling out here with us. Right now, we get the Dow Industrials up 62, NASDAQ's up 27, S&Ps are up 8. We have uh, gold down 2, uh, platinum is uh, down a buck and a half, bonds are down 19, king dollars down 37 ticks. And, folks, if you haven't test drove the Nadex platform yet, come over to our website at tfnn.com. You can see the banner at the top on the side. Uh, you can test drive that right here, right now. They'll put 25000 of funny money inside your account. Uh, if you've been out there for a while, you can, you can basically get an account open. And uh, today is just a beautiful day out there. Uh, uh, why? Because the uh, bottom line is that uh, the NASDAQ, uh, what the NASDAQ's done here is that we've gone into, if we take a look at the uh, three Qs, this is what you've had, folks. The three Qs out here, you got Apple behind the move, of course. Apple started, uh, got the NDX 100 positive yesterday. The... NDX right now, the three Qs are over the swing point of 67.79, and the real key is that uh, as she's going into, she's coming into the downdraft that was um, out there from the October 9th level, the, the high of that is 68.33, we've hit 68.13. What's happening, guys? How are you doing today? Absolutely hey, man, great. Good, man. Good, good. So, you know, uh, what do you think of this market? Hey, you're just waiting for the uh, bears to show up for work. It looks oh. like uh, you know they're they're preparing. They're preparing for the storm. Yeah, they're preparing Wait, for the storm. Where are these bears? And this is insane. Yeah, it's like it makes no sense. But you just ride it and enjoy it. So whatever. Well, no, yeah. you know it's it's a great it's a great trading market. You know it's 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 uh, just yeah. like uh, like yesterday as the market was moving down. You know I've got a, a ten minute chart up on my uh, screen and uh, just simply using a candlestick pattern, some other divergence out there, overbought, oversold indicators. It's just a matter of just sitting there being patient. In yesterday's case, as the market was moving down and it got into that intraday over uh, sold condition, just waiting for the signal and reversing and taking a, a long position. Really, all we're doing is the same thing today. On the 10-minute chart, uh, the uh, 1.272 expansion is 15.15, and so far it's at a high of 15.14.50. Uh, uh, Close enough for me. Now it's just a matter of watching uh, for the uh, bears to uh, come out of uh, hibernation here and uh, push the market down into about the 1504 level. So at least that's that's a trade I would be uh, looking at on a uh, short S and P. But you got to wait for the signal, or, or you can take it down. I mean, because it depends on what the it really depends on what the reward to risk is that Daryl's able to find. Yeah, and uh, Daryl, if you can bring it up because I like it right here. Because uh, this is what you have. So, oh yeah, this is. I mean, we're at a short right now. Yeah. Now this, this, <laughs> this is the number, folks, and this is why it's the number. Okay. So picture, you have a couple of different things I'm happening. Gonna... We have a Friday. We're coming right into the, that 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 level. Okay. So the the reward versus the risk is pretty dramatic at this particular point. You know, because you've had the what ends up happening with all of these, and you can see the spike uh, inside the S and P. You, you had. The, the first spike, you had the second spike, it's like, okay, you know, what you're going to see out here in the market in general is that you got about another, I'd say about another hour, and everything's going to slow down. So your probability is that you're going to come in with dramatically lighter volume, and all the S&P, the cash s and I mean, the future S&P has to do is close under the 1511 price point. You're at 15.13, we've hit 15.14.50. And the reason I'm saying that is that then what you'd have there is that you'd have another failure. And today I, I suspect the volume is going to be dramatically lighter, you know, because of the storm. The storm in the Northeast, folks, people are going to have to get out of town quickly. There's just a mess up there. There's no doubt about it. Absolutely. So, Aren't you glad you're not up there? Uh, you know what? You know what I'd love to. I'm glad I'm not up there right now. But what I would love to do is have a button that, as soon as all the snow's done, I can press a button and sit there. Because when it's done, folks, it's going to be so beautiful 
for the first 24 hours. Then I had another button that I can get out of there. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, nothing like a fresh snow, you know, across the, uh, you know, across all the trees and the houses and condos, apartments, everything. Especially before in the everything city. Gets, before everything gets dirty. Right, especially in the city. Because what ends up happening, folks, is that, you know, Boston's clean, but the reality is that there's an old city. So what ends up happening, man, you put a paint job on it with snow, and it's beautiful. Two seconds, man. Absolutely. So, Daryl, using the analyzer that you've got, what trades uh, can you uh, find for us in the S&P futures? Uh, well, for the S&P futures right now, let me pull it back up. Um, I'd be looking at the noon. I mean, if it's going to follow along with the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ just had its RSI divergence. It's starting to pull back right now. Let's just say the S&P was going to follow along with it. Then I'd be going over and looking at probably, I'd be targeting um, settlement of yesterday, right around 1505. Yeah, I'd say the 1505, 1504, absolutely, yeah. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and probably sell the uh, 12 o'clock expiration. It's a little bit out of the money, but our risk-reward is actually good based on our profit target. Okay. Uh, we can go and sell the 1500 to 1510 noon expiration. And I'll bring that up right here. Yeah, that works. So, so it's a little bit out of the money. But uh, considering where our take profit is down at, you know, 1505 or so, then we're making about 40 bucks on $10 risk. Yeah, that works. Because what you have here, so watch this, folks, on, you know, on a 10-minute basis. This is what we've done. The, you know, you, you got over that whole, uh, this is on the, on the uh, future now. We got over the 1511, and we got over the 1511. What you did is this. You, you did have some real volume. You did 106,000 contracts on the daily, right, on intraday. Then what ends up happening is that it contracted so dramatically, though. With the next 10 minutes, you did 50,000. The next 10 minutes, you did 50,000. It's going to be how do you test when we come back down the 1511 price point. And all we have to do because the 1511 price point was at basically 0600, um, you know, two days ago, uh, bottom line is that you don't need a lot of juice to get back inside this. So, it, you know, and the, the other side of that, meaning that what is the next juice on the way up? Well, when you look at the actual market, what you have is this, is that you, you have basically Apple is basically running the deal again. <laughs> Yeah, they they kind of dropped off to the wayside for a bit, but now they're back in town. Yeah, no, they're definitely back in town. And you yeah, know, if, and that, that, that that's the wild card out there because they're inside that gap right now. They are. And if you if you the thing that you know what the, this is what I like about the deal right now, meaning Apple is in the game. It is absolutely a pump and dump. The thing that's amazing is I was bringing this up yesterday. If this was ever Stevie Cohen and SAC that basically you know pumped this yesterday, the SEC would be all over them. All of them. Do you know what I mean? Because yes. what was unusual, and it wasn't, it, it, the, 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 the unusual part, folks, wasn't Icon coming out saying what he wanted done with it. Okay, he could do that. The unusual, <laughs> the unusual part was that Apple came out and responded at 20 yes. minutes of four. That, right, yes. that's, that was, that, that flat out, they're going to say it's not material because all they said is that we were looking into how to get cash to, you know, shareholders. But, you know, the, the, and so my point on that, folks, is this, is that they're desperate. They're desperate to get to higher price, and you know, they're not going to get to higher price, man. So <laughs> it's going to be wild watching this shake out, man. Absolutely. So your king, your king is off and running. Oh, man. Hey, hey, there's no doubt, folks. The king dollar, uh, when we take a look at this, what king dollar had done the, is yesterday is this. She took out the B point with conviction and you know uh, this is on even in the in the intraday but she's setting up a much larger abc structure right now she took it out with a vengeance when she got over that b point man she had it she did forty four thousand contracts yesterday and you know the the first price projection was eighty point six nine now what you have is that you you are coming into the downdraft that was created out there on the tenth and that's the kind of volume that we did need, okay? Um, you know, when we came down, you know, we came down with some heavy volume. We came down with 38,000. Well, guess what, folks? We went into that with 46,000. You know, yes. so, so King Dollar, man, King Dollar's on the way to 8170. You know? Yeah, and the queen, the, the queen is supporting that. You know, if I take a look at the 30-minute uh, chart on the uh, euro, came down hard yesterday into the 11 o'clock hour. You know, matching, obviously matching our markets as well. And what was interesting is even though our markets got a, a nice bounce uh, coming into the uh, close yesterday, the euro 
couldn't get anything going. It's just been traveling sideways in this consolidation uh, pattern, working off its oversold condition. And really, there's these consolidation patterns. They, they so often resolve themselves in the direction that they came from. Right. So the euro just setting up for a continued move uh, lower on the intraday charts, on the uh, daily charts as well. So I think uh, you know the only the only uh, issue that we've got is we've got the uh, Japanese yen now starting to uh, get a little bit uh, stronger here. So that'll put it, you know, take a little bit of energy out of the move in the U.S. dollar index. And you know, the uh, what you did have last night, folks. Uh, when we talked the yen, when you, when you talked the uh, Nikkei, uh, you had the Nikkei uh, pull back. But let me tell you something on this pullback, folks. You know, let it can pull back a lot more, but you're going to want to be all over it. This is an extraordinary run. And you know, if we if you go over to Sony, you know, Sony basically has been up 50 percent. You know, six well five three months, and that's pulled back. Came off the high with volume, so don't buy it now. But you know, Sony at uh, eleven fifty, man, twelve bucks is going to be a, is is going to be the deal, man. It's pretty amazing well, what's, what's happened over there. Yeah, and what it what it is because you, you're exactly right because the what 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 Sony has done, what the yen is uh, doing, the Nikkei, all of them setting up just a huge large A to B leg. So just like Apple in reverse on the way down has set up a large A to B on the way down. Uh, you know, uh, just timing timing the uh, B to C leg on the uh, whether it's the U.S. dollar Japanese yen currency pair, right. or whether it's the Nikkei, or whether it's Sony, just nice large moves. Hey, Daryl, have you traded the uh, the the yen uh, dollar um, on Nadex? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can yeah. see that. I mean, after this pullback, that's <laughs> that's that you talk about risk versus reward. That's pretty amazing, man. And I traded the uh, U.S. CAD this morning. I hopped in, and uh, well, you know, basically there was five. I talked about this yesterday on my show. Yes. And there was like five news reports that came out this morning, all at the same time. Okay. And uh, so basically, you see this massive move right there, but a uh, pretty easy trade. Made a hundred percent return in about three minutes. And so, so walk us through that again. <laughs> what were you trading? I, I, I traded the U.S. CAD. All right. Oh, okay, okay. U.S. Canadian dollar. Okay, right. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. And uh, basically, what happened was um, at you know eight thirty, they had a bunch of reports coming out at the same time. Yes. So we had right before that, we had housing starts, and we had employment change, then we had trade balance, uh, then we had unemployment rate, and U.S. trade balance. So all that happening between those two currency pairs. Right. So when you have obviously a whole lot of announcements with two currency pairs and nothing really after it to stun it. Yes. That can make a really good uh, strangle. Okay. Or straddle, either one. Yeah. Um, and so I went in and, and I did a uh, strangle this morning. Let's see here. I can pull it up. Where's it at? And, folks, if you haven't test drove the uh, Nadex platform yet, you can come over to our website and Perfect. you'll see the banner on the right hand side, uh, the right uh, on the top. Just hit that banner. You can test drive it and put 25000 funny money in your account ASAP. But uh, you stay right there, I folks. Daryl's gonna come. For... Hey, you just stay right there. As soon as we come back, we'll okay. do that trade. This is Daryl right. Martin, Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes. Appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow right now up 61. Nasdaq up 26. S and P's are up eight. Gold's flat. Silver's up 17. Platinum's up 10. Bonds are down 21. King dollars off 37. We're gonna be right back, folks. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Daryl Mott, Steve Roach, Tom O'Brien. Appreciate you growling and prowling out here with us. Let's go to uh, beautiful Boca Raton. We have Susan. Hey, Susan, how you doing? I am good. Hi, Tom, Steve, and Daryl. Nice to talk with you. Yeah. You also. <laughs> Thanks for calling. Appreciate yeah, it. Tom, Tom, just a couple of questions, general questions, okay, that I'm a little confused about, if you can um, kind of help me with this. I thought I was under the impression that, generally speaking, as we're longer at this top of the market, I know the volume's not been at all that, but the longer we're here, isn't the possibility that we would break this and stay over it or no? Oh, yeah. You can go to high, high. You can go to high, high with lighter volume. Absolutely. Okay. okay. And second question. This is like a question covering um, currency and market comparison. Again, generally speaking, as the dollar goes up, normally it hits the commodities and the S&P and the market down, correct? That's right. Okay. But have you seen a dislocation lately? No. No. Okay. Okay. Because the market's still going up and the dollar's going up a little bit. The commodities aren't. But the commodities right. aren't. Right. There was the dislocation. Well, I actually, yeah, let me, the dislocation inside the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Dow goes back to last November. Commodities continue down, go, you know, they've got killed, actually. Uh, not all of them, but basically, you know, the metals have got killed. The stocks have got killed. So last November, all, you know, S&P, NASDAQ, uh, Dow continued higher. The rest of them continued lower. 
So the dollar right now, when we, we actually look at the dollar, the dollar really hasn't moved. You know, right. we'll see what type of move we have right now. This thing wants to go to 80, it looks to me like it wants to go to 82, 83. You know, that's, that's moving. You'll, you'll see action. You'll see action very, very quickly. Action in the market going down, right? Well, actually, yeah, I guess you could go look at the, whether it's the DAX or the FTSE. The DAX and the FTSE, bottom line, in 12 and a half hours gave back two months. That's right. what happens in markdown. And that's what I expect you're going to see happen in our markets. Okay, so they're kind of leaning right now, would you say? Or, no, or, I'm, just, no? I'm just explaining that that's, you're, you're, you're going that, and, and I understand that, okay, we're going higher on a continual basis than we are. And what I'm saying is that that's correct, but in 13 hours you can give back two months. So you can, take, you you can take your choice which side you want to be on. That's what it comes down to, because that's what we're talking about, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. No, right. it could be a really quick thing, and it's the no. Market. It will be a quick thing. It's yeah. always a quick thing. Always a quick thing. <laughs> it's yeah, always that the, the the key is, folks. You don't have to be shot the market, but you know you can take the cash out of the market. It's always a quick thing. People, if I've learned anything over the last thirty years, people never get their money out of the market. You know, no, because you know I I am short. I'm just waiting for this quick thing. You know, so yeah. I guess a lot of people are here. So all right, one of the, Susan. One of the Susan. Yeah. One of the best currency pairs if you want to correlate it to the market is the uh, is the uh, euro us is the euro japanese yen yes, currency uh -huh. pair yeah so so if you have if you have that currency pair and on your charting system if you can overlay it on the uh, charts or somehow but it follows the s&p really well and what it also does is uh, when you see divergence it typically resolves itself in the uh, direction of the uh, currency because the currencies are ruling the world so we're just now starting to see over the last three days here, we've seen the uh, Euro-Japanese yen make its pullback, give its uh, candle signals out here. So I would say uh, pay attention to that currency pair, uh, throw that over the uh, chart, and it's just simply a great leading indicator. All right. Well, thank you, and, and everybody have a great weekend. You too. Absolutely. Have a great one. Have a All safe right. one. Bye-bye. Hey, you know, the, we want to hear from someone up up where, up uh, in the storm weather, folks. I want to I want to hear about how the storm's coming in, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> hey, it's it's a great weekend to uh, you know go listen to all the archives at uh, TFNN. Uh, That's a fact. Know, for, yeah, for that... everybody in the Northeast, good good way to get educated. That, yeah, and well, you know, I, I tell you the. Uh, 35 years ago, man, I remember the storm so well because, and what did happen though, you know, we had a call yesterday and they, and they were right. What had happened, folks, is that it was, the storm was as big, but we did have a huge amount of snow already on the ground. So that was different in the aspect that they, the, the, uh, the, when the wind comes, the drifts were much bigger because I was wondering, because I had walked out my second floor window i have a th i had a three story and i literally i walked out the second floor and that was that's what that was the ground right there <laughs> yeah amazing absolutely amazing so hey, you know uh right. oh go ahead daryl oh i was gonna uh, get in front of the usd can trade here yes right. yeah let's uh -huh. go to it right after this next break all right. <laughs> that was quick. That was quick. <laughs> you, you, you stay right there, folks. We got uh, Steve Rhodes, Daryl Martin. We want to hear from you out here. We have the Dow Industrials right now up 60, NASDAQ up 25, S&P's up by 7.5. And, and this NASDAQ, folks, is not going to hold. It's going to be interesting to see where we go here in the next uh, 25 minutes. You stay right there. We're coming right back. Just recently, on December 28th, Market Insight subscribers were advised to go along the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF, on December 28th at 63.91. And only two trading days later, after a huge jump in the markets, Market Insight subscribers were advised to sell the QQQ at 66.64 for a $2.73 or 4.27% profit to start off 2013. At the same time, Tom O'Brien had advised his clients looking for a more leveraged trade that they could have initiated a position in the QLD, the ProShares Ultra QQQ ETF, and over the same two trading days, Market Insight subscribers were able to lock in a $4.48 profit or an 8.47% gain in just one trade. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during your free trial and pay nothing. Don't miss out on the next great trading opportunity in 2013. Act today.
If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Treve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We had the uh, Dow finish, oh, well, finish, not finish. The Dow's up 65, Nasdaq's up 25, S&P's are up by 7. Uh, we're looking at Daryl's chart up here. So uh, talk to us, Daryl. All right. Basically, what we had is uh, right here this morning, we had multiple trade testing on the U.S. Canadian. Yes. Um, so we had the other startup came out a little bit early at 813 that actually started a little bit of a launch on it. But uh, that was really a minor impact report. It just, you know, Automatically went in there, and it was as a, it was really bad, even though it's a minor impact report. So the Canadians started getting weaker. But then at 8:30, which is when I hopped in, the employment change, trade balance, unemployment rate, all out of Canada, and the trade balance out of the U.S. with their you know currency reports, yes, you know, import export, um, all came out at the exact same time. So that's a perfect time to go in and either you know buy and sell a straddle, or uh, but basically buy and sell a box on Nadex. Okay. Um, now if I can't find one because I was looking for one this morning, but I didn't really see a good lined-up spread simply because the market had already ran up some, and there wasn't just a perfect spread for me right at that moment. Yes. And so I hopped over to the binaries and to the binary on it, and I, I go to spreads first because I prefer the spreads. But uh, if there's a binary, you know, if I have to go to binaries, I go to binaries. And so I went in there, and I bought the binary. What I did is I bought a uh, 15, sorry, not 15, <laughs> one second here, I'll open up my order history. Okay, so I went in there and I bought the 1.0027, okay, um, on the USD CAD. And 
I'm saying this isn't just like random. I'm not just randomly picking strikes over on NADEC, okay? Uh, my one and a half deviation mark is one zero zero two nine. I see. Okay. Okay. So and it, yep. And no, I went no. and I sold point nine nine seven seven, and look, my settlement is point nine nine seven six, and I'm right in the middle at point seven. So basically, we're talking point seven up, point seven deviation down. Okay. Yes. I put the trade on. Have about you know a little over twenty dollars risk on the trade. All right. And then I, as soon as I put it on, I said a take profit to buy this one back if it falls down at, um, so I sold a bit, you know, around 90 bucks to a little bit higher than $90. So I have a order to buy it back at 57 I'd order to sell this one out at 43 And so basically, it's, the net result is about 100% return on investment. And it goes in and it takes literally, I mean, this entire, it's a little confusing to leave this chart, but it's like that's, that's less than a minute of movement. So flies right up there. And then I have an RSI divergence. Right when it hits the on top. top of the one yeah. and a half deviation, so, which is a perfect, like, hey, take your profit, get out. And, I mean, it just, the entire trade is lined up exactly as expected. So, folks, if you're in your car, what we're looking at is that you're looking at an expansion up very quickly. And what that has to do with is that, as Dow said, all this information is coming out at the exact same time. So he was taking advantage of the volatility that was in the market, basically. And... You know, you have it in, you have it out, and bottom line is that. So now you get one, you got one leg that you can still get, huh? On the way back, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still have it right. There. right. So yeah, I mean, if it comes back, actually, I order right now to take profit if it gets back to break even, because then I get to keep all my money. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. No, I can see that. I can so see that. I'm not even trying to make the big money on the downside all the way back down. I'm like, hey, if I can get this thing back out of break even, which is you know getting closer, right? Uh, you can take advantage of that. So yeah, I actually go in. and... If I take the profit really quick on one side, I'll go in and I'll set the other side to break even. And that would be a pretty sweet scenario. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, then you basically got to be directional without having the other side that you had to take that loss on. So this increases your, your return on, on investment. Yeah. So instead of being 100% ROI, you end up being like 200% return on investment. That's pretty wild. And, and folks, if you haven't test drove that Nadex platform, come over to our website. And if you happen to be in California, Dara and I are going to be coming out there and the San Francisco area in March. So uh, you stay tuned, we'll get you what that date is. Um, but we're gonna get that uh, out there. We're gonna be growling and prowling out in San Francisco, the San Francisco area. So uh, that's gonna be fun, no, no doubt about that. So this S&P right now, so what the s and is doing, folks, is that it's, it's making the run right now for the test of that high on the 10 minute. And so what you have is this, this is gonna be interesting. So let me see, what exactly time is it? This is where, uh, there it is. So it's, uh, she's got two minutes. Okay, so this is what you're doing. You're going into uh, 106,000 contracts, and right now um, we have 33,000. So the real key is going to be, does it hit it right now? It's only, uh, it's hitting it right now. So that's how it is. So, so now watch what happens here, folks. It would have been, if you're a bull, it would have been better that it basically didn't hit it now. The reason being is that um, the amount of contracts that it has to do in a minute is pretty incredible, you know. So we'll see whether it can hold this uh, 15, 14.50. And right now you're 2,500 hundredths over it. You're, and what what you do have though is that uh, if this held off for another minute, um, the way I look at the market, it would have been a lot better because it, it wouldn't have had broken it and it was hanging right underneath it. And then you basically take off because now what you have is that if we actually close underneath it on a short-term basis, and that's what we're talking about at this particular point, um, it would be a failure, you know. So uh, we'll see where this next one uh, opens. We're right, right now at 15. You know, you got to love it how these markets spike, man. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, well, well, volume, what's the volume look like on the uh, NYSE right now or, or the uh, NASDAQ composite? Yeah, what, so what, so how's, how's that? It's, yeah. let's, let's see. We have... Yeah, it's a joke. It's 127 million on the NYSE, and it's so that that the 127 million, by the way, folks, is absolutely nothing on the Nasdaq. It's 500. Both both of them are the lowest, and um, you know, of the last three months, at this particular time. That's if you happen to be watching, you know, that's that's how it's set up at this particular. Which which makes sense, okay? Because you know, there's plenty of people that didn't come into work. So the real key is going to be can it hold price out here? Because you know, as I said to Susan, yeah, you can go to higher highs. Uh, if you go to lighter volume, if you hold price, you hold price. My take here, the broad market index, something I see too, is you really don't see a, uh, there's really no movement as far as the, you know, up, down, the advance and decline. Yeah. Especially I mean, beyond the, you know, initial open. Right. Uh, 
right. it's been flat all morning. Despite seeing this move up, the number of stocks up and down is flat. Yeah. So. And, and all this is going to take, by the way, folks, okay, um, is basically Apple to pull back slightly. And, you know, what you'll end up seeing is that uh, the NDX 100 won't be able to handle it. See, the NDX 100 is going to be, well, to me, it's crucial right now. And the reason being is that that it has been trying to get into that uh, 67.79 for basically three weeks. It hasn't been able to get over that for 21 days. And, you know, we'll see whether it can hang over that today. Uh, the composite itself, if you take a look at the composite, what we have with the composite is that she is testing the high of the 21st of September. That high is 31.96. We got the 31.95.17. Now that high, folks, had 2.5 billion shares. So if the NASDAQ closes inside it, yeah, it can go to the top of it because it just missed it by uh, one point this morning. If it closes at the bottom of it, that's all, that's all she wrote. So it's because the, we know that the, the volume characteristic is going to come in so much lighter. And, you know, 2.5 billion, we haven't done 2.5 billion since that, that date out there, so. So that's the note right here on the deviations. So the post every night, uh, 1514, which is basically the close of the last 10-minute bar that we just had. Yeah. Uh, that is the 0.7 deviation level. So that's where you'd be looking to tighten your staff right now if you were long. Cool. Into reversal. So, nice. Yeah, two to six. Let's go to Dan in New Jersey. Hey, Dan, what's going on? Hey guys, how you doing? Um, I was looking. I wanted to talk to you about the tick and the trend. I haven't really uh, heard much about it recently, but I'm looking at the at the trend, and you know, it's getting down to about five or so. I guess I haven't added it up. I just want to see what you what you thought about that. It has to get a lot lower than that. So the tick and trend, folks. Okay, you know, you can use this at. Euphorias are, you know, basically the Armageddon's, and um, you know that's when it works well. And right now, it's not saying anything. The tick, and the trend has to get down to about three, Dan. You know, yesterday it was one point three seven. Today, right now, it's one point one zero. It's it's not, it's not euphoric. Let's put it that way. And the the, the tick is the same way. What ends up happening is that you. The, the way that I use it, first you need a rejection of higher price, in this case, right? You need the trend to come down and average a 3.3 3 for five days, and then you need the tick to go through the moon, meaning you need a plus 1,200, plus 1,300. And it's just the opposite on the bottoms. On the bottoms, what you're looking for is a plus 14 on the trend, and you're looking for, you know, minus 1,250 to minus 1,450, two separate days within a five-day span. Because you're looking for the tick and trend is fear and greed. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And right now, if you if you look at that, it's it's not saying a thing. You know, 1.37 is fine. 1.10. You know what we're at right now is fine. 1.53 two days ago, we still only had a, a 0.79 and a 0.85 on the fifth and sixth. So that's that's you know people are bullish, but that's not euphoric. All right. Cooking, brother. Have a great one, man. Have a safe one. Yeah, you, you bet people are bullish. Everybody's on one side of the boat except uh, a couple of us on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> I might not have a boat pretty soon. <laughs> oh, man, I'm telling They're you. They're trying to toss us out of the boat. <laughs> well, hey, listen, man. <laughs> the bottom line is is that, uh, you know, we'll see where this shakes out today. The long, This is what ends up happening, folks. Um, like right now, it, it, it absolutely will, will not back off. Uh, let me pull this up. I'm bringing up the NASDAQ futures for a second here because she has no strength, but there's no sellers either. And that's what we've had. I mean, the bottom line is that, you know, the sellers haven't been there. You know, yesterday was a shot, no doubt. I mean, down to that uh, 2710, 2702, uh, that was a shot to get the lower price. And we have the juice down there. But, you know, the volume came in. And then, uh, you know, basically it resilient and came all the way back. You know, so well, what's, what's, the, what's the weak link right now inside the uh, NASDAQ? What's, uh, you know, we know Apple's got some of the strength in there. What's, what's taking it uh, lower today, you got Nuance Technology, that's down 25%, four bucks, four, 467. Uh, you have, uh, let's see, uh, Stericycle, she's down a buck 21 at 96. Uh, Liberty Global, that's been getting hit. That's down 77 cents. And you got Intuit uh, Software. 
okay. which take, which actually taken the Nasdaq up today. The biggest one is Activision. Activision's up a buck eleven. That's taken it up. Um, you got uh, Micron. What's that ticker symbol? That's ATVI. And then you got uh, the, these. These two here have been in downdraft. So Seagate Technology and uh, uh, Western Digital, I think, right? No, no, Western Digital is not. No, but that, that's what is taking it up. Both of those are taking it up. Those, mm -hmm. those are the top FOA inside the NDX 100 right now. Now, what that means, too, that, so check this out. This is where this gets interesting, folks. What that means is that without Apple being at the very top now, because it's up $6, Apple would only have to basically pull back slightly in order to basically pull it down because it's not pulling it up right now. And this is where this modified structure inside the NDX 100 and the NASDAQ is <laughs> is absolutely amazing. Because, see, if we go over to, watch this, you go over to Wrangell Resources, now, Wrangell Resources, folks, is a gold stock, but Wrangell Resources has a, has a high weight inside the NDX 100, you know, and if that's flat right now, but if that starts moving lower, you're going to see that pop up in a second. Another equity that has a high weighting that does put use into it um, is Biogen. You know, Biogen is a high weighting inside, inside that structure. So where Biogen goes, that's where the NDX wants to go also. That's great information. Hey, got to be... Friday, Friday morning, you know. Uh, well, yeah, let's let's go let's go over to Europe for a second, see what's happening in Europe. Because when you when you do look at the uh, we'll go over the DAX first. When you look at the DAX, when you look at the the FTSE bottom lines, you came down, you came down with vengeance, man. I mean, this thing was nasty. <laughs> it's pretty amazing, actually. And you know, the DAX itself, you know, you know, bottom line is that yeah, it's going up on lighter volume today. So that's saying that the DAX is going to make its way back into seventy four hundred. Right now, you're at seventy six. We go over to the FTSE and the and the UK. Same setup in the FTSE. You know, FTSE is up today. It's given back. Uh, it's got back half of the downdraft, but same setup, man. You have two separate legs down, and and they're they're big. The thing that's going to be interesting too about is about the FTSE. I mean, about the euro is that they didn't even make a decision that euro get croaked yesterday, and that was just a, a that, that was just a talking <laughs> pattern, right? Yeah. I mean, that's all it really was. They haven't yeah. done anything yet. Uh, well, the traders are saying it wants to get croaked. <laughs> yeah. No, listen, man. You know, uh, Euro, Euro land, uh, bottom line. It, it, I think, it, to me, it's a common sense deal. It's like, okay, you know, people always keep talking about the dollar, and, and they really think that the Euro is, you know, and Euro land is, is stronger. They're all slaves over there, man. I mean, they, you know, you tell, they lost their freedom years ago, man. It blows my mind, actually. But they did. They, and they, they, they're just cute about it. Do you know what I mean? You yes. Know? Now, what I have up on my screen right now, I've got the Euro-U.S. dollar currency pair, and I put in there one of uh, Bud Rolf's rising price channels. Okay. And I also have, uh, uh, you know, Fibonacci retracement on the uh, pullback from the lows off of the uh, November, uh, uh, January 4th level all the way up to the high that was put in on uh, February 1st. And what's interesting about this uh, this rising price channel and the pullback, the 618 level would take it all the way back down to the bottom of the rising price channel. Wow. Yeah. It may take a few days, obviously, to get there, but uh, which I would suspect it's not going to do it overnight. But it looks to me like you know the euro wants to get down to 132.689, and then we'll see if it holds that rising price channel. I suspect that it will. Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Dow Mott. You stay right there, folks. We're going to be coming right back. We have the Dow right now up 66. NASDAQ up 27. S&Ps are up 8.5. We're going to be right back, folks. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the technical corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for.
Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Great moments are born from great opportunity, and that's what you have here. The opportunity to answer the questions, should I buy or should I sell? Should I be in or should I be out? Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN, and I produced a free report, Reading the Message of the Markets, where I'll teach you how to use a set of tools that will answer these questions. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com right now and download Reading the Message of the Markets. This free special report includes step-by-step -step video examples that would have had you out of the market before the crash of 1929, before the crash of 1987, and would have had you back in the markets buying at the bottoms. This set of tools works on all time frames and all instruments. This set of tools will shape your trading and investing future. Folks, this moment will never be here again. The only cost is not taking action. You were born to be a money master, and the time is now. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com and order Reading the Message of the Markets. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the Dow right now up 16, NASDAQ up uh, 27, S&Ps are up uh, eight and a half. Uh, uh, and if we go over to the, uh, the largest mover uh, on the downside, uh, what you will see, um, and this is, uh, this is applicable to a nuanced technology. She, so she's down 460, folks. If you bring this back, uh, we'll just bring this back a year, uh, what you're going to see is this. You're going to see, first off, an equity that, you know, bottom line has been basing off for quite a while. But what you're also going to see is a uh, it had a high volume low at $19.99. It goes from $19.99, and that high volume low, by the way, folks, was November of 2012. It goes all the way up to $24. So uh, let's see, we're up 33%, right? And this is the ultimate of, it's not the ultimate, but even when we were talking with Susan, when I was saying how things go, and you know, you, people just uh, can't get out. Well, bottom line, it opens down at that high volume low. Now, what it's doing, it's going to blow that high volume well away. This is going to go down to 15 bucks now. So it's pretty, it's amazing. I mean, the bottom line is that, yeah, can you pump up with no volume? Absolutely. Uh, can folks get out of it? Most of the time I've seen that it just doesn't happen. It just, they, the market doesn't, just give, does not give you a chance to get out if there's no demand versus supply in the marketplace. What else is going on, guys? The thing that keeps holding right there at that deviation level, man. I'm like, come on, drop. Yeah, and you know what? What you're going to see is that 
Uh, we only get about another, I suspect we only get about another hour uh, for any kind of action. And then I can see, I can picture this just flattening out. You know, because what you are going to have, folks, is that the, I know we get uh, some tigers uh, and tigresses uh, up in the Boston area, and it's already snowing up there. So I'm sure it's snowing in New York right now, and that's going to slow things down. Now, that, that the, what does happen in a market that has already gone topside and is over the highs, um, all it will take is someone else that's sitting in Chicago or California deciding that, hey, you know what, I'm going to whack this market at uh, basically one thirty, two o'clock or 2.30, you know. Oh, I thought, I thought you were going to say somebody sitting in Clearwater. Well, I already whacked it, man. It hasn't done anything <laughs> yet. <laughs> I, like, I like this spot right here, you know. There's no doubt about it, but, you know, we'll see. <laughs> Everybody got tap on top of their monitor a little bit to help knock the, the price down. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, the, the, you know, it's so funny. Coordinated about, effort. Yeah, that, that, you know, I, I have seen that years ago. Um, you know, you don't even hear about that too much anymore, but I, I've absolutely seen. When electronic trading first started, folks, computers used to be flying across the rooms. There's no doubt about it, man. I mean, well, I've, you know, it, I've seen some people that have some incredible tempers. It's like, man. <laughs> and it's, it's like, it was always insane. It's like, what do you, man, you better go get another profession because you, you, if you think that computer just did it to you, you're out of your mind, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Well, you know, everybody's really talking about today as being, obviously, you know, preparing for the storm, light volume, and so forth. But we already know it's a storm that is likely going to drop a ton of snow. You know, in New York City, Boston, uh, beginning, what, uh, tonight, tomorrow? So Monday should be a light trading day as well. Yeah, no and doubt. I think, I think Monday is going to be tough for people to get into the work. Yeah, no, no. There's, let's so now, see. now the question is, do you want to go home with these long positions knowing that? Yeah, well, and, and do you want to go home coming into the year of the snake? Well, Sunday's oh. the year of the snake, right? It is. Oh. oh, Yeah, this is the Lunar New Year, man. The, the markets in, in China are going to be closed next week, man. Okay. Cool. Oh, the year of the snake, man. That's disgusting, man. I hate snakes. Snakes. <laughs> yeah, me too. Oh, man. I'm telling you. So random. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you. Hey, listen, folks. For all you folks up in Boston, I, I got a funny story. One of my best friends, uh, his name's Norman Crump, right? And we used to go to camp together. He used to bring home about 10 snakes, right? Now, picture in South Boston. He'd let them go in his, in his bathtub, right? And they'd be all over the curtains. His mother would come down the corner smacking him around. It was amazing. <laughs> you stay right there, folks. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next. Nico next. Daryl's going to be right after that. Uh, Ken Treve, David, back here. Have a great one. Thanks, folks. Have a safe one.